Hello everyone, it's Alex here. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, obviously, the first thing I've got to do is say thank you so much for all the wonderful reaction I had to my first vlog. Um, you gave me some amazingly kind comments and lots of you subscribed, which is fabulous. Um, honestly, I was chuffed a bit, so thank you so much. Um, yeah. But I thought I'd come and give you a little bit of an update and let you know what I've been up to recently. I've been making a few things and I've also been at a trouser fitting workshop which was held at Bobbins and Bolts which is an independent fabric shop in Yorkshire in the north of England. Um, it's a two week course, we do the second week this Saturday coming so I will give you a bit of more of an update on how that went. Um, when the whole thing has been completed. Uh, but in the meantime, I talked last time about my plans for coats, or I mentioned it, um, and I've made a coat in the last 10 days. I had wanted to make a coat that was a bit longer than normal. I just had plans for something a bit more um, swishy and cosy. And I'd popped in to Fabworks on the way back from holiday to see if they had anything suitable. I knew I wanted a, a sort of mid to pale grey and they had some wool which was a little bit more expensive than I'd hoped to pay. Um, it was £18 a metre but it was exactly the right colour and it's 100% wool so it'll be lovely and warm. So I bought that and then had a bit of a think about what pattern I wanted to make. So in the end I opted to make the Parker coat from Style Art Patterns, which I actually made last year in a bottle green boiled wool, and was probably the coat I grabbed most of the time last year. But yeah, it was my go-to. So I thought, do you know what? Let's make that again, but make it longer. Um, and that's what I did. I was a bit tempted because I'd got such nice fabric to make something a bit more formal and something with a lining and all the rest of it. But in the end, I thought, no, 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 that is the coat I want to make. So just do that. I just wanted you to all know how fantastically simple and easy a pattern it is to make. It is Stylark, and if you know anything about them, they don't make the most hand-holdy of um, pattern instructions. They are a bit sparse, but I find actually they give you the information you need. There's always a really handy diagram that tells you um, which seams go with which seams. Um, and in the case of this coat, it's just incredibly easy. It doesn't have any buttons, so you don't have to worry about button band. And that suits me. I never or very rarely um, button up or zip up my coats anyway. Um, it does have a collar of sorts. But there's no collar stand there's a facing and the collar is simply sandwiched between the facing and the body of the coat so you really don't need to worry about that and the sleeves are not set in the sleeves are attached on the flat and then you just do an almighty uh, seam from the hem of the sleeve through to the hem of the coat that's it it's really really easy so if you were somebody that either wanted to make a coat that's pretty quick or somebody who's maybe a bit of a, an advanced beginner and thinks that coats are, you know, way too challenging. Honestly, this one is great. It's a really good one to do. The only thing I did that the pattern um, doesn't cover is the there is a facing and the pattern has that sort of sandwich between the shoulder seam and the hem. And therefore it would sort of flap around a bit. And knowing me, I'd get it caught on a handle or something. So I did stitch that down with a slip stitch although if you wanted to be even quicker you could top stitch that down and just make a design feature out of that top stitching i chose not to do that but that was just you know personal preference um the wool from fabworks was great to work with and because you are not lining it you do see your inside seams when i um did the one last year in boiled wool, I didn't do any seam finish at all. Most of the seams are top stitched, so actually you could get away with that with a fabric that doesn't fray. Um, and in fact, this wool fabric, I probably could have got away with it as well, but I wasn't too sure. 
So I thought it'd be better to overlock it and it gave me the perfect opportunity to use this overlocking thread that I bought a few weeks ago that looks like this. And this is the monochrome thread. It's from a place called Little T's Haberdashery. And she also does a pastel rainbow and a bright rainbow. That's the pastel rainbow. Uh, I don't have the bright rainbow, but I used that on uh, my ginger jeans. So I'll insert a photo so you can see what that one looks like on a hem. But what it does is give you this kind of a finish. Um, and I really liked it. I mean, obviously, oh, well, I still like it, in fact. Obviously, I could just have overlocked that in a matching grey um, and it would have just disappeared and that would be absolutely fine. But I was dying to uh, use this and see what it would look like and I, I think it gives it a nice little detail. So I'm really happy with that. Um, and I know, because I know how much I wore the green one last year, that I'll wear this all the time. Um, and in fact, what I was thinking is that in the winter months when it does get really cold, I'm gonna wear, um, you know, you can get those uh, layers. They're like a sort of puffer jacket type thing, but it's very thin. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And also, it really doesn't take very long to sew. It's pretty easy and pretty quick. So honestly, I really, really like this pattern and I recommend it. I thought I would also show you the other thing that I've been making this week, which I'm still, I'm just about to finish it off. And it is for, just had a delivery of fabric which is why I'm rustling away here and Posty turned up with three different packets of fabric for me I know I'll show you those next week though um so this is for Min my Minerva Crafts blog and this is a faux angora this is the beige colorway you can see it's quite an open weave so you definitely need to wear something underneath it or you'll be flashing um, but it's really does feel like Angora, um, but it doesn't have any of the laundry issues. So, because it's synthetic, so you just bung it in the wash. I've pre-washed it with no problem. In fact, if anything, after I pre-washed it, it um, softened up. It feels so nice to wear. Um, so I'm really looking forward to finishing that. And I am making, I am part way through, more rustling. This uh, asymmetric knit sweater, which I've had my eye on for a little while, and it's from a French pattern company who are called DP Studios. Um, I never see anything, I've never seen anybody um, write a review or heard anyone talk about them. If you go over and have a look at their website, they've got some really, really interesting designs. So I was kind of dying to um, have an excuse to make this jumper so when I saw that knit come from on the Minerva list I was like right I know exactly what I'm making so they do do PDF patterns I mistakenly ordered the paper pattern rather than the PDF which comes in rather nice um, packaging with a sleeve over it the uh, paper is you know that kind of like photocopy of paper rather than tissue so I like that because I'm less likely to ruin it um so yeah it's a great jumper it's got look it's got really interesting style lines and the instructions come in english as well as french but to say they are simplistic is an understatement um i looked at the instructions for this and just thought what on uh they weren't easy but um once I worked out what I'm supposed to do, the trick to it was there are lots and lots and lots and lots of pattern markings. And basically each marking has a letter and you have to match the letters. It's not a traditional um, set of instructions by any means. And the only issue I had was because of the nature of this open weave with this fabric. I was like, well, how am I gonna mark that? Because chalk wasn't gonna work. So I ended up doing a bit of a complicated uh, system where each letter had a different colour thread and I marked each marking with thread and then put all the different coloured threads together. More detail will be in uh, 
the Minerva Craft blog when this comes out, which will probably be a couple of months, so I usually have quite long lead times. But it's been a bit of a complex one. It's been a bit of a puzzle to work out. However, once I did work it out, I really, really like the finished thing. Um, I had to twirl it. So I like my twirl. Um, so yes, this is what I've been working on. When it's finished, I'll show you some finished pictures. But yeah, like this fabric, it's great. So that has been, I've also been um, making a blackwood cardigan for Minerva with some uh, bouquet fabric. I had a little bit left over and I didn't like to leave that little bit that was left over. So I've made a pair of, well, a couple of pairs of socks out of a sock pattern that you can sew your own socks. Um, so again, when they're completed, I will update you, but I'll put a link to the pattern because again, that's quite interesting. And it's on my make nine. So it's quite good to get that ticked off. So yes, if you remember, I had some brown Cupro fabric that I was going to dye. I wanted it to be a deep red. I chose a plum red colour. I used Dylon dyes, which I bought from Amazon because they were the cheapest. Um, I'll link them down below. Uh, yes, yeah, so I chose plum red and it's come out pretty much exactly what I wanted. So here it is. I mean, obviously the shift from brown to a deep red is not massive but it's exactly what I wanted. And um, I have made a top out of this, but we'll come to that in a sec. And then with the lime green, I've cut it in two and I chose a jeans blue and an emerald green. So the emerald green comes out pretty much as you would expect, emerald green. It's got that sort of two-tony type effect. Um, I'm really pleased with that, obviously. Well, don't know why obviously I really like green it's when you've been um when you've had reddish hair all your life you get sort of indoctrinated that you must wear lots of green so green is definitely my comfort zone um so yeah really happy with that I need to think about what I'm going to make with it the blue was not quite as successful in that what I got was not a lot different from the emerald green um, maybe I should have realised that. It has, it is slightly different and it is more two-tone because you can still see the blue more than the other one. If you look at the two together, there is a slight difference, uh, obviously not huge. And I slightly regret that. I, if I thought about it, I should have known that was what I would get. Um, I wish I'd uh, chosen black for this one. But I was wary of that because I thought if it goes greeny black, that can look a bit cheap. But I now think it might have been really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm still really pleased and I still think I've got lots of usable fabric. So it was a good experiment to do. I have now subsequently seen that quite a few people are now stocking um, tensile jerseys. And I bet they're really nice. I'd really like to try one of those. So yeah, I'll add it to the list. Never ending list. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with those. I shall start rustling up something in them in the next little while. Um, but I made out of the red one, I made a fielder top, which is from Merchant and Mills. It comes as a dress and a top. I haven't made it before. Um, I really like this one. I think it's the kind of thing that I'll wear an awful lot of. Um, and I used um, pink for the contrast ribbing. Oh, it doesn't have to be contrast. Um, pink is a newish colour to me, uh, but as long as it's a dusky kind of pink, I, I'm kind of coming around to it. I quite like it. Uh, so I really like this pattern. I'm not overly keen on the way they do their darts. They tend to, they do the darts open um, so that you have to either overlock or zigzag them together in the middle once you've created your dart. I don't like that, but I know that for next time. I just won't cut them open. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with it. The only problem I've got is that the fit is a bit tight across here. And I'm not sure whether I just need to size up, whether I need to add more to the sleeves, which I think is what it is, um, or whether I need more across here. But I'm going to have to twirl it because when I was at Bobbins and Bolts at the weekend, I bought some of their... Um, grey 
flannel, I think it's Robert Kaufman flannel, which is absolutely gorgeous and wonderfully soft. And I bought that to make uh, the field a dress out of, because I thought that'd be great over the winter, either with boots or over a pair of jeans, like a tunic. So um, yeah, I need to do a bit of a twirl. So I'm not quite sure the best way to overcome that that fit issue across here. So if anyone's got any ideas, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. That would be really good. And um, the only other thing, I mean, this sounds a bit housewifey, but I just thought I would share with you that I bought a new ironing board cover. Um, the existing one I had, I'd managed to get a hole in it and it had seen better days. So it was time to change the one I had. And I'd seen that Minerva Crafts stock, um, this one that's specially for sewists. Um, it's made by Prim and it has all, all sorts of geometrical, geometrical, geometric um, lines on it, um, which is really good for pressing. And it doesn't come with any padding. So I had some interlining that I wrapped around my ironing board and then put it over the top. Um, but it's been great. I mean, it was really handy when, for example, I was making the pockets for the coat. Um, you know, and you want to make sure when you've turned the seams to the inside that they're at right angles. You know, just to be able to press it on a board with lines on it has been really, really useful. So I'm not suggesting you all rush out and go and get one uh, if you don't need to replace the one you've already got. But I don't use my ironing board for anything other than sewing because I've been banned from ironing because apparently it made me grumpy. Um, so I only press, I don't iron. Um, yeah, so, but I thought I'd share that with you because it actually it's turned out to be really useful and I'm really, really pleased I got it. And I think I'm going to leave it there. I've got, um, well, as I said, because of this rustling noise over here, I've had three deliveries of different fabrics just now and um, I'll show you them next time, well, I'm hoping. I'll have used them and they'll all be sewn up and I'll have a whole new load of things to show you. Um, but until then, I'll see you next time. You know what to do with the whole subscribe thing. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye.